Hi there, my name's Vicky. Thank you for joining me for the next session of our virtual tours of Drax Power Station. There'll be some questions at the end of this session, so feel free to make some notes as we go. I'm sure you will have heard of the word boiler. Within your homes, you may well have a couple of boilers. One will be the kettle you find in your kitchen. This is a small boiler as it heats the water up. The other larger boiler within your home forms part of your central heating system, heating water for your radiators, as well as heating water for your hot taps. You may find your central heating boiler in your kitchen, utility room, a bedroom cupboard, or even your loft. It has already been mentioned in previous sessions that Drax Power Station has six units which generate electricity with a unit comprising of pulverising mills, a boiler, a turbine set and a generator. In this photo you can see my colleague standing by the boiler house indicated by the red arrow. The blue outline shows the shape of the boiler inside. This gives you an idea of the scale of the equipment used at Drax Power Station. Each empty boiler weighs 4,000 tonnes. This photograph was taken inside the boiler house. You can see the forced draft fan to the left of the photo, which draws air down from the top of the boiler house. The blue outline shows the bottom part of the boiler. The rest disappears up out of view. Remember, the boilers are 65 metres tall. Again, my colleague is stood here to give you an idea of the vast size of the machinery we have inside the power station. We inject hot air into the pulverising mills to transport the pulverised fuel to the boiler. The reason for the air being hot is all due to efficiency. If we put cold air into the mill, this cold air will end up inside our boiler, which will cool it down and decrease the boiler efficiency. The pulverised fuel is transported along pipework from the 10 pulverising mills towards the boiler. The pulverised fuel is injected into the boiler at various points along the height of the boiler through burners which can be seen in this photograph. The finely ground powder gives the solid fuel the properties of a gas, enabling it to ignite quicker. Additional air is blown into the boiler to drive further combustion and optimise the fuel's performance. The temperature inside the boiler can reach up to 1,400 degrees Celsius. I'll discuss later in this session how controlling temperature can enable a reduction in emissions. In addition to this, how the fuel enters the boiler is also important to its efficiency. The fuel-air mix is injected into the boiler in a spiral rotation to enable efficient combustion of the fuel. Again, we want as little wastage as possible. In these photographs, we can see a new burner waiting to be fitted into the boiler wall. The veins on the inside that you can see here are what swirl the primary air that is carrying the pulverised fuel into the boiler. The veins on the outside swirl additional air to aid combustion. We call this secondary air. Inside the boiler, there are 300 miles of pipework known as the boiler tubes. This is roughly the distance between London and Newcastle. Inside the steel boiler tube in, Pure boiler feed water is turned to steam by the heat of the furnace. This pure feed water is 1000 times purer than the water you drink. The water has been deionized and demineralized on the Drax Power Station site. Regular tap water contains minerals which can lead to a buildup of limescale, which is the solid white deposits that you can often see inside the bottom of a kettle. 
Using the pure water stops the boiler tubes getting clogged up with line scale and corroding. This pure water inside the boiler can add 500 tonnes to its weight, so it can now weigh about 4,500 tonnes. The steam produced in the boiler goes to the steam drum and is then piped through the superheaters where it reaches the temperature of 568 degrees Celsius and 165 bar pressure. But what do we mean by bar pressure? Bar is the unit in which pressure can be measured in. To give you an idea of the energy that is in our steam, it's helpful to compare it to the pressure within a car tyre. When you pump up a car tyre, it is pumped up to somewhere in the region of two bar pressure. Yes, that means that the pressure in our steam is over 80 times that in a car tyre. Whoa! At this point in the process, we have now turned the water into a very powerful source of energy. It is this superheated steam that we pipe over to spin our turbine sets. We now need to get a little bit technical in terms of the gases that are produced and released within the boiler. In the air that makes up our atmosphere, the most abundant elements are nitrogen and oxygen. On their own, these elements are harmless, but when exposed to extremely high temperatures, such as in a power station boiler, they react together to form something called NOx. So what is NOx? NOx is a collective term for waste nitrogen oxide products, specifically nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. And when released into the atmosphere, they can cause problems like smog and acid rain, as well as impacting on the human respiratory system, aggravating conditions such as asthma. At a power station such as Drax, where fuel is combusted to generate electricity, some NOx is inevitable as air is used in boilers to generate heat. But it is possible to reduce how much is formed and emitted. Getting rid of NOx is, at heart, a problem of getting combustion temperatures to a point where they are hot enough to burn fuel effectively. Too hot and the combustion will form excess amounts of NOx gases. Too cool and it won't combust efficiently. Drax Power Station, as with all power stations within the UK, need to comply with UK and EU emissions limits and Drax reports its data to the Environment Agency throughout the year. At Drax, Lots of technologies are used in order to limit the emissions released into the atmosphere. The company is constantly investing and innovating technology to reduce emissions. So what has Drax done to reduce their emissions? In 2003, the original boiler burners were replaced by low NOx burners to reduce the oxides of nitrogen produced. Then, in 2008, boosted over fire air, known as BOFA technology, was retrofitted to all boilers to reduce emissions of oxides of nitrogen, NOx. The BOFA system works by forcing air into the boiler. That means the fuel burns at lower temperatures and that reduces the amount of NOx that is produced. The overfire air which is injected into the boiler above the main burners mixes with the tails of the flames and this increases the volume in which nitrogen oxide levels can be reduced. Drax further demonstrated its commitment to the reduction in emissions in April 2013 by successfully upgrading the first of its generating units to use compressed wood pellets called biomass. The power station currently has four of its six generating units running on biomass, with the fourth one having been converted in the summer of 2018. The sustainable biomass used naturally produces less NOx than coal, aiding the reduction in emissions. 
During 2015, Selective Non-Catalytic Reduction, SNCR technology, was installed. SNCR is yet another method to lessen emissions of nitrogen oxide. The process involves injecting a chemical called urea into the upper area of the boiler, where the temperature is between 800 degrees Celsius and 1050 degrees Celsius. This urea reacts with the nitrogen oxides formed in the combustion process, resulting in molecular nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water. Drax also uses laser technology to measure gas composition and temperature. Lasers are used because different gases absorb light at different wavelengths. They're fitted to the sidewalls of the furnaces, another name for the boilers. The lasers scan for furnace exit gases. This gathered information is then used alongside other emissions data to provide a real-time feedback to optimise combustion in order to minimise emissions of NOx and carbon monoxide. Another potential environmental emission from the boiler is dust, very fine ash from the combustion process. This is dealt with by the electrostatic precipitators. An electrostatic precipitator is a type of filter that uses static electricity to clean up exhaust fumes once they have left the boiler, but before they exit into the atmosphere by the main emissions chimney. At Drax Power Station, each boiler has three precipitators which contain electrically charged plates and wires. These attract the dust or lightweight fly ash from the flue gases. It's a bit like television or computer screens, attracting dust in your homes. One of the two electrodes is charged with a high negative voltage and this plate causes particulates inside the gas to obtain a negative charge as they pass by this electrode. Further along the process, the second electrode carries a similarly high positive voltage. Based solely on the fact that opposite charges attract, the negatively charged particles are pulled towards the positive electrode and stick to it. At regular intervals, the electrodes are wrapped with a motor-driven hammer and the ash falls into the hoppers below. To summarise, the exhaust gases coming out of the boiler are dusty. This dust is referred to as particulates and we trap a lot of this particulate on electrically charged plates and wires inside electrostatic precipitators. This process means that the exhaust gases that leave through the chimney are a lot less dusty. The cleaned up emissions then continue their way to the main emissions chimney and are released to atmosphere. The chimney is 259 metres tall, with foundations that are over 21 metres deep, with 44,000 tonnes of reinforced concrete having been used to make it. It consists of three elliptical flues, each of which serves two boilers. The flues are reshaped to a circular shape where they emerge from the top of the chimney to extend another 9.1 metres. The chimney used to hold a world record as the tallest emission chimney in the world. It isn't now, but it is the tallest in the country. It's 101 metres taller than the Blackpool Tower, 15 metres taller than Canary Wharf, but 41 metres shorter than the Eiffel Tower. As you have seen, Maximising efficiency whilst minimising environmental impact is important at Drax Power Station and the company have invested heavily in technology surrounding the boilers and their emissions. The research and innovation department are always busy. Right, that's enough information. Let's see what you've remembered. If you can't answer a question, scroll back through this video and have another look. Question 1. 
What is the height of a boiler at Drax Power Station? Is it 70 metres, 65 metres or 60 metres? The answer is B, 65 metres. The height of a boiler at Drax Power Station measures 65 metres. Question two. How many of Drax's six generating units run on biomass? Is it two, four or six? The answer is B, four. Four of Drax's generating units run on biomass. Question three. What is the chemical symbol for oxides of nitrogen? Is it CO2, N2? or NOx? The answer is C. The chemical symbol for oxides of nitrogen is NOx. Question 4. What does BOFA stand for? Is it boosted over fire air, boosted over fire ash, boosted over flame air? The answer is A. BOFA stands for Boosted Over Fire Air. Question 5. How tall is the main emissions chimney? Is it 529 metres, 259 metres or 952 metres? The answer is B. The main emissions chimney is 259 metres tall. Thank you for joining me to find out about the boilers at Drax Power Station. Keep an eye out for more virtual tours.